Hello and welcome to another video on a Mac question. I know I've gone slightly out of order here. I'm doing Mac 2014 question two. I will do the 2013 ones. Um, I've got them done, but <laughs> I just haven't had a chance to do it. And this is what some of the students in my class are working on at the moment. So I thought I'd better pop up some solutions or at least, you know, might be interested in how I did it. Uh, hopefully they've got it right. But I quite like this one. It's not too bad. There's lots of ways of thinking about it. You might have got the correct answer but done it you know a slightly different way to me it's but it's it's it's, it's nice there's not really too many ways you could sort of get it wrong uh, there are some difficult bits in it though so let's go through it let a and b be real numbers consider the cubic equation okay looks like a cubic it's got some constants in it b a squared show that f equals if x equals one is a solution then this inequality holds well i guess we'd better plug in one then if it's a solution so one plus two b minus a squared, sorry, plus 2b minus a squared uh, minus b squared equals zero. <sighs> Looking at this, I'm thinking I'm interested in b, so I guess I might as well try and solve for b. So I'll put the b squared and the minus 2b on the right-hand side, and essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to treat this as a quadratic in b squared, yeah? If it's a quadratic in b squared and a squared is like the constant and b squared is like the variable I'm interested in, then I would complete the square for b, quickest way of doing it anyway in this case, add the 1 over, I'm essentially just trying to solve for b here, square root, <laughs> don't forget your plus or minus, and then add the 1 over, yeah? Okay, so that's interesting. B is clearly depending on A, yeah, which is not a big surprise. Um, uh, but what is interesting is the square root. Yeah, I don't know if that's making the colour, but let's zoom in a bit. <laughs> what is interesting is the square root there, because especially as it's written 2 minus A squared within the square root, well, A squared is strictly positive, and we're doing 2 take away a positive number. Well, immediately, this tells me that there will not be a value of b that we can obtain if a is greater than root 2 or if a is like uh yeah if a is greater than root 2 i think is all i need to say here or less than yeah it's got to be actually bounded between minus root 2 and root 2 hasn't it um i that's what i can deduce from that that basically if a was larger than root 2 or smaller than minus root 2, then after you square it, you get 2 minus a number larger than 2, and so you're going to get square root of a negative number. That, what that's telling you is it's impossible for x to equal 1 unless that condition on a is satisfied. So that's interesting. Okay, we've got the value of b as well, and I suppose I'm thinking, well, if a is trapped between those values, then the most b could be would be if this was 1 plus root 2, yeah? And the least b could be would be if this was 1 minus root 2. And that's exactly what we're trying to prove, yeah? I don't know if uh, you understood my argument there, but I was, it was like kind of a description of it. The reason why this is true, just have a good look at this equation. The most that could be is 1 plus root 2, because a could be 0. And the least it could be is 1 minus root 2, once again, with a equal to 0. And so we can just kind of see it from there. But the way I've notated it in my notes anyway, is I've said, well, you know, as 0 is less than or equal to root 2 minus a squared, which is less than or equal to root 2, yeah? And you can just kind of see that, like just inspecting that function. Well, if that's true, then we can straight away point out that if b equals 1 plus root 2 uh, minus a squared, then we can replace that with b, can't we? Because, uh, you know, well, if we look at this line, it might be more obvious from this line what I'm doing. Um, if we take the positive one there, we can say that b minus 1, which equals this, obviously, is going to be less than or equal to root 2, just taking the right-hand side of the inequality. And therefore, b is less than or equal to 1 plus root 2. On the other hand, or if you like, but also, if we now take the negative of that, in other words, times it all by minus 1, um, all the signs are going to turn around. And you're going to end up with 0 
is, uh, if you like, greater than or equal to minus root 2 minus a squared, which is greater than or equal to minus root 2. Obviously, this should be written down the other way around, and you're probably very familiar with this kind of trick. Well, when we uh, use that and add, you know, um, and point out that b minus 1 equals this, and just use the uh, left-hand side of the inequality, we can see that 1 minus root 2, well, b's definitely going to be larger than or equal to that. Hence, 1 minus root 2, <laughs> 1 minus root 2, sorry, I'm not great on the graphics tablet, is less than or equal to b, which is less than or equal to 1 plus root 2. And there we go. That bit's difficult, actually, I think. Uh, that's one of the most difficult bits of the question, really, if you ask me. Um, but there we go. Uh, right, part two. Show that there is no value of b for which x equals 1 is a repeated root of star. OK, so this is the way I approach this. And I think they mentioned this way as an alternative method in the Mark scheme, like just very briefly. But um, this was what occurred to me first anyway. I was like, OK, if x equals 1 is repeated, then x minus 1 squared is a factor. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and multiply x minus 1 squared. Well, let's point out a equals x squared minus 2x plus 1 straight away. I'm going to try and multiply another linear factor by that to make this cubic. Yeah. Now this is where I do division by progression. Um, hopefully you're familiar with what I'm doing here, this kind of method of doing vision, because it's much quicker if you ask me. Uh, but yeah, if I can just, I'm just going to pull down this so I can see the equation right next to it. Here we go. Brilliant. Just so I can see what I'm doing. Uh, yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and come up with a linear factor to make x squared minus 2x plus 1. I'm going to try and come up with a linear factor, which when multiplied by this equals that. And the first thing I notice about this linear factor is it must be x minus b squared. Now, I'll probably try and explain to the examiner what I'm do doing here because I, at the moment I'm just showing working. I mean, it's nice that I can talk to you, but I need to tell the examiner. So clearly, the linear factor must be of the form x minus b squared in order to produce a minus b squared on the end the one times by minus b squared is going to give me the minus b squared so i'm going to say that first yeah just letting them know it must be of that to produce the cubic but i'm still going to uh, show you a contradiction now because this is a proof by contradiction, and maybe I should have flagged it more as a proof by contradiction. Um, you know, assume x equals 1. And then we're going to derive a contradiction is repeated. Then, yeah, there we go. And then we can just make it nice and clear to the examiner that we're doing a proof by contradiction. So you get minus x squared, b squared. You get uh, minus 2x squared. You get plus 2xb squared. You get x and you get a minus b squared. Now let's compare some coefficients. Yeah, if we compare this to, I think this is called star. They often, yeah, give it names. That's a good idea. Um, if we just look at some of the coefficients here, let's look at the coefficient on x squared. We've got 2b for our x squared, and here for our x squared, we've got minus x squared b squared minus 2x squared. So I guess 2b should be equal to minus b squared minus 2. Now let's just turn this into a traditional quadratic. b squared plus 2b plus 2 equals 0. This has no solutions. Why? Discriminants less than 0. Or if you prefer, just complete the square on that in your head and you'll see you're going to be squaring a negative number. This has no solutions as 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times 2 is less than 0. Yeah, I'm just showing the discriminants less than 0. OK, so <laughs> there we go. There's a nice little contradiction. You could have used the coefficients on x. They'll give you another contradiction. So you don't have to do this. But just to show you the coefficients on x would have given you another contradiction. You get 2b squared plus 1. You know, this was looking at the x squared coefficients. If we look at the x coefficients, um, and I would like to 
explain to the examiner a bit more what I'm doing here. But there's there's two contradictions you can show here. If we've got 2b squared plus 1, if we let that equal to minus a squared, can you see why that's a contradiction? You've got a square, a 0 or bigger. 2b squared plus 1 is clearly 1 or bigger. Minus a squared is clearly 0 or smaller. And so that's impossible. Yeah. And so clear contradictions here. Hence, x equals 1 cannot be repeated root. There we go. Right, and now we just got part 3 to do. Given that x equals 1 is a solution, find the value of b for which star has a repeated root. Now, <laughs> this is the kind of thing you read where you just think, didn't I just prove that this wasn't the case? <laughs> but you notice very subtly you're saying x equals 1 can't be a repeated root, but x equals 1 is a solution, and you could have something else which is a repeated root. Find the value of b for which that's the case. Okay. Um, once again, I just kind of dived into this question, really, and it seemed just natural to say, okay, okay, <laughs> then it must be of the form x minus 1 x plus a squared yeah and i'm just going to multiply out and you know equate coefficients again uh, so this is x minus one times by x squared plus two a x plus a squared and multiplying out again gives me x cubed uh, okay let's try and group these plus x squared going to be that's going to be minus x squared plus two a x squared so if i have two a minus one there i think that's right and then for the x terms you're going to have minus 2a well x times minus 2a uh, but then you're going to have plus a squared and then you're going to have a minus a squared on the end cool now what is this this is supposed to be the same as once again star let's see if we can just get star in the you know within just so we can see it okay there Right, that's supposed to be the same as that. It's <laughs> annoying. Uh, so once again, we can just equate coefficients, yeah? So as we can see from these coefficients, as this has got a minus a squared on the end, this has got a minus b squared on the end, you know, we must have minus a squared equals minus b squared. So a squared equals b squared. And so a is plus or minus b. Watch out for the plus or minus there. They always try and get you with the squares and square roots in these papers. Try and make sure you don't lose solutions or, you know, gather extraneous solutions. Like, it's, it's hard not to. Mm. So, okay. Um, a is plus or minus b. What are we going to do next? Well, let's say a equals b. Yeah, let's, let's assume a equals b. And then let's try and find the value of b here. What we can straight away see is that here, where we've got 2a minus 1, that's supposed to be equal to the x squared coefficient here, 2b. So we've got 2a minus 1, oh, sorry, 2b minus 1, because a is b, equals 2b. And that don't look right. Contradiction. And you've got a contradiction because that's not the only possibility. So maybe, just maybe, a is minus b. And you can see what they've tried to do there, you know, just stitch up students who just square root and don't put plus or minuses in. Um, then what we're going to have, if we just do the same thing as before, we're going to have uh, minus 2b minus 1 equals 2b. And I think that's going to give us a quarter is b. b is negative a quarter. Okay, cool. I've got the value of b. Brilliant. Isn't that what they asked for? Uh, for this value of b, yeah, it does. <laughs> for this value of b, does this cubic have a maximum or a minimum at its repeated root? Well, what we've got here is the repeated root. Remember, I multiplied out x plus a squared x minus b squared or x minus 1 sorry um, and so this is really the cubic x minus quarter i believe a was minus a quarter wasn't it because b was minus a quarter oh but that means a is positive a quarter i beg your pardon um, and so what we're going to have here hang on let me just check that <laughs> let's get this right 
uh, B is negative a quarter and A is the negative of B. And therefore, I guess A is positive a quarter. So I think it should be X plus a quarter square, which means I may well have drawn it wrong <laughs> in the in the work that I'm looking at at the moment. But I think it should be like that. Yeah, looking at that, 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 that makes sense to me. And what do we have? We have, well, if we want to draw the shape of that cubic, it's going to go through uh, minus a quarter. It's going to touch minus a quarter. It's going to come back down. It's going to go through one. And so it's a maximum. at the repeated route. Yeah, sorry, I was just checking everything there. I'm just looking at what I've done. I do this all the time. I've written, uh, you know, I've written a solution to this. It's all neat and tidy, but it's wrong at the end, I believe. Uh, pretty sure that's right. Um, comment in the bottom, though, if you think I've done it wrong. But uh, I like that question. Doesn't seem too bad, really, to me. Anyway, well done. Thanks for listening. Bye bye.